Hi, Greg Lewis, Metastock Software. Your presentation will start in about 30 seconds. I just want to tell you how you can get your free copy of our most popular book, Secrets of Successful Traders. This ebook, now in its third publication, is packed with valuable information from some of the industry's best. Experts like Rahul Mohindar, John Bollinger, Martin Pring, and Steve Nissen, to name a few. Best of all, it is absolutely free. To get your free copy of Secrets of Successful Traders, visit metastock.com slash YouTube book. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy your presentation. Hey everybody, Jeff Kibbe here, uh, Metastock, hope you're doing well. Apologize, we're starting about five minutes late, we needed to get uh, going with the recording and we had a little bit of a difficulty with that, but welcome to the webinar room. Uh, today we've got a great uh, speaker, great guest, and uh, we're going to go ahead and bring him on. So. Let's go ahead and do the legal stuff first. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. All right, let's go ahead and uh, just kind of talk a little bit about Roy. Roy, uh, Roy, I've had a chance to kind of go through kind of like his trading methodologies, his trading courses, his manual. He's been doing it for a number of years. Uh, I think it says since the 1990s. Um, always a good presentation. Always has something a little bit interesting to say. So let's go ahead and bring him on here. Roy? Hi, hi Jeff, how are you doing? I'm doing good, how are you doing? I'm doing really well, really well. All right. Let's go ahead and make you the presenter here. Thanks. Okay. Should uh, should ask you if you want to share your screen. Okay, hold on. Yeah, I was hoping to do okay. How's that? You got it? I got it. Okay, very cool. Okay. I can see it well. All right, so I guess I'll just go ahead and turn the time over to you. Okay, hi everybody, thanks for coming. Um, we're going to talk about triangulating your trades uh, with three indicators on Metastock, and uh, let's get at it because we're starting a little late. Um, I've got a disclaimer too, but I won't read it all. I'll let you read that real quick. Okay, good. But uh, really it comes down to that uh, I'm not a broker or a certified financial planner. Uh, any any posted results that uh, we show are illustrations based on simulated historical trades. And past performance on this or any system is not indicative of uh, future performance. The information here is solely our opinion and intended to stimulate your own explorations regarding trading. So uh, a little bit about me. I'm the founder of SteadyTrader.com. I've been trading about 20 years. Um, I was actually had a chance to work on the first derivatives uh, for DLJ in 1999. Um, I've been a consultant to a number of trading system providers over the years, and a couple of years ago I decided to go out with uh, my own system because I know the strengths and weaknesses of a lot of systems and uh, why traders have trouble even with, even with good trading systems. So on the agenda today, we're talking about how to scan for accurate buy signals in Metastock. And uh, we're going to cover three sections. One is how to set the right goals um, in terms of activity, timing, and targets. Uh, the second section will be about how to use corroborating indicators, or what I call triangulation of indicators, to uh, basically improve the accuracy of, of your buying decisions. And uh, we'll, along the way, we're going to cover a little bit about um, decision theory and how to make the right decisions uh, that sort of interlace through here. At the end, um, everyone's welcome to get a copy of uh, our free book, Read This First Before You Buy Stocks. Um, it talks about new rules for the new stock market. It's uh, published just about uh, two years ago up on Kindle and Amazon. Uh, you can get it free at the end of this session. So um, to get started, I just want to make sure that everyone here is interested in systematic trading. Um, 
there's two kinds of trading I think basically out there in the world. One which is advertised a lot, which I don't subscribe to, is trophy trading. I call it trophy trading. Um, we like to do systematic trading, and that's also why I like Metastock because it uses data and it allows you to be systematic about it. Trophy trading, in case you're wondering, that's about the big win, right? Everybody's advertising the big win. But of course, the big win, you know, that that 20% gainer or whatever they tell you it's going to be, that's a needle in a haystack. And it's always high risk. And I mean, in my humble opinion, it's almost always based on, on something like news or insider news and not data. It's a low percentage play. It's really low percentage play, and it's like hunting. Um, systematic trading is going for the consistent win. It's trying to get the first down. It's trying to get the single, get on base. It, you know, the winners are always available. Um, it's a low risk play. It's based on data and discipline. And it's a high percentage play, again, because there's always winners out there, um, but they're not necessarily the big, big win. And it's more like fun farming than hunting, but I think, as we all know, every civilization on Earth depends on farming more than hunting uh, since the beginning of time. So uh, we're real big fans of systematic trading, and uh, that's what we're going to talk about here, uh, a system that you can use to create buy signals on a daily basis. So the first thing I, I want to talk about is setting the right goals before we even get into the indicators. Um, and there's three goals that, uh, that we used to uh, develop the system. One is activity. How often do you want to trade and how much time do you want to spend um, trading? The second is a time horizon in, in terms of your position and hold, hold length. How long, what is your time horizon? Do you want to hold for months, years, minutes? Um, and then game targets. What, what percent? Uh, gain per trade are you really looking for to make it worthwhile, to make it worth your time? What kind of ROI or return on investment do you want, do you need to get to make it worth your, worth your while? So the problem with goals, as I see it, is that the market has changed. And uh, a lot of people don't trade the market as it is. We have to trade the market as it is, not as you wish to be. And um, a lot of this is covered in the book that you can download at the end of this presentation. But uh, let me just make a brief uh, comment on that. Um, this is a five-year view of, uh, of the Dow, um, and uh, you know I've, I've highlighted it here on the left side in the blue box. This is the market a lot of people are trading. This is the market as it was, and this is as the market as it was for many years, and it was just going up, 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 and there were long runs up. Um, but that is not the market we are in today. In fact, for two years, and this is a two-year view, it's kind of the right side of that chart, the market's basically flat. The market is range bad. We've had a couple corrections, yes, and we've bounced back from them. But the fact is, is you know, some people call it a go nowhere market. It's range bad within maybe a three or four percent on a, on a day to day, week by week basis. Except when we have these corrections that you know everybody knows about. So this is the new market. It's short, strong cycles within those ranges, and it's because the this short-term profit taking, it's not going away. The institutional players, they're all on the same page. They all have the same computer, computers. The big buyers out there buying the big blocks, it's not going away because that's, that's the game they're playing and they're driving the entire market. Uh, I call it kind of the victory of market efficiency. Um, everyone wants efficient markets and now in the age of computers and it's really finally hit in the last couple of years um, with, again, all the institutional players using the same algorithms, more or less with minor tweaks, um, we have what I call kind of ultimate market efficiency. I don't see anything changing from what we've seen in the last two years, um, and we shall see. So with that in mind, the goal, the goal of activity, the number one parameter we wanted to look at before trading, um, we wanted to look at the last, worst example in recent memory, and that would be the crash of, of 08 and 09. And if you look on a monthly basis, um, that was a terrible situation, and people with a long-term, on a monthly timeline, people holding positions from, you know, say a month or so at a time, it was devastating. But if you look at the same exact period of time on a daily basis, and you look at each one of those days, and really you could focus on these green bars here, because those are the days the market went up. Well, out of those 105 days, 40% of them were up days. 40% of them were up days. And the, the lesson here is that on a daily perspective, people who are getting out there every day, looking for trades every day, 40% of the time, even in the worst period we have seen in our lifetimes, and we're probably likely to see in our lifetimes, 
even in that period, 40% of the days were up. They were up days. So this, the lesson that we took from this is that it really pays to have a daily perspective in terms of looking at the market fresh every day because it changes a lot. You see these green and red bars, they alternate pretty quickly in there, and uh, the market just fluctuates. And in, in other words, uh, even during the crash, was there really a crash if you were in and out quickly, if you were looking at the market on a daily basis? So we set our first goal in terms of activity to be looking for signals, to be looking for trades and opportunities on a daily basis. The second goal is time horizon. And in terms of the time horizon, we believe shorter is better. I mean, the stats are all there. The, the average hold in 1960 was eight years on, on positions. That was, you know, hold it and, uh, you know, stocks will be good to you. Hold them on to them for years. In 2014, that average was down to five days. We all know that professionals are trading minutes to seconds uh, these days uh, with high frequency trading and all the rest of that. We can't necessarily do that, but the point is very clear. It's, it's inarguable. Holds have gotten shorter and shorter, especially at the professional level. And again, the moral is, is that remember that last chart about the crash, you can avoid corrections by getting in and out on a daily basis, by looking for opportunities on a daily basis by being agile. And agile in the year 2016 means looking at the market on a daily basis, not just setting it and forgetting it. Um, we like to promote what we call a quick cycle portfolio where the money goes in and out of the market. Money goes in Monday, comes out Wednesday, that kind of thing, comes in every couple of days. Um, and making a few percent <coughs> on, each, on each block, on each buy. Um, rotating your portfolio quickly. You can see that, you know, if you make two or three percent on each flip of your of your money, that's going to add up. And uh, we believe that, that that is a good strategy to, to take in terms of the current market and keeping that daily perspective. Finally, the third goal, and it's, it's all kind of a piece here, it's all of a piece, um, are your gain targets. If your time high horizon is only one to five days, um, gain targets have to be realistic. <laughs> and that ties into systematic trading in the 1% to 5% range. In the context of a time horizon of only a couple of days, that's what's available. You know, the big swings of 10, 10 20, 30% on a, on a particular buy, they're going to be once in a blue moon. But the 1% to 5% gains are always available. The short holes, there's no long run-ups anymore. So we set our gain targets to be modest and realistic in the 1% to 5% range with the short holds. So we set these three goals. And then we decided to pick our indicators, and now we're going to start talking about you know, the three indicators and the triangulation method. Uh, we start with a little bit of decision theory. When you have a big decision, I'm sure you've heard this a lot, break it up into multiple small decisions, right? Make small decisions to add up to a big decision. This is taught in any, in any theoretical uh, decision theory class. Um, the reason is for the law of compensating errors. Let's say you make five decisions to make, get to your big decision. You might get two of them wrong because we're all human, but you might get three of them right. So on balance, uh, you will probably tend to make more right than wrong if you break it up into multiple small decisions. And that's part of the reason why we like to use multiple indicators. The other thing you learn uh, in decision theory is to use a triage process, and that is about prioritizing the, those small steps, those small decisions, prioritize them and use a sequential process as you're making those decisions. Don't just make five random decisions, but selectively filter them in a sequence. And what I mean by that is, if we're going to use three indicators, put everything through indicator one, then take the results of that, put it through indicator two, then take the results of that and put it through indicator three. And then you get your signal. That's sequential filtering. That's making small decisions and using the best of decision theory you can teach us to make the big decision, which is your buying signal. You don't want to do this. You don't want to just have three indicators, one, two, three, and look for the intersection. That is not sequential filtering. Um, and the fact is, is you're probably not going to get very many to, to hit in that middle here. We're talking about sequential filtering, going from step one to step two to step three each time getting tighter, tighter focus on a better and better signal. Uh, the very important point um, in terms of the order of how we, how we look for signals and how we triangulate our signals. So 
With that in mind, and knowing these facts about the new market, about the short, the value of short-term holds, about the fact, the fact that the market changes its bias every couple of days, we want to pick three appropriate indicators that we could use for sequential filtering based on the modern market to find short-term moves in, in the you know in the one to five day range. Why three? Why did we pick three indicators? Triangulation is a concept that has been around pretty much since the dawn of uh, since the dawn of time. You know, navigators in antiquity look for three stars on the horizon to find out where they are. Judgments, tribunals, we've all heard about tribunals, military courts. Three is the number that comes to a decision. Why three? Because if you only use two inputs, you're going to get indecision. One's going to be for, one's going to be against. One indicator is going to say yes, one indicator is going to say no. If you go as far as four or five indicators, there are just too many conditions. You're just not going to end up with anything. If you're looking to get some signals on a daily basis, I mean, you can try it yourself. You want, to, you want to just keep looking for four, five, six indicators? Sure, I mean, it's easy to do in Metastock, but you just, you're not, too many conditions, you're just not going to end up with any results. So three, again, this concept has been around for centuries. It works, um, and that's why we chose three, because you always come to a clear decision. There's never a tie. It's two and one. One, you know, one's, one is going to be against or four, two, four against. And otherwise, it's three, three, zero, three, zero. So you just don't end up with a tie. You always get a clear, clean decision. Now, when looking at some of these technicals, we wanted to be wary of the technicals that trade the old market. And uh, again, there's that old market uh, before the last few years when the, the market really flattened out and before computer trading just took over everything. And a lot of those technicals for candlesticks or the Elliott Wave or whatever, Bollinger Band, they're all from... 20, 30 years ago, they really are based on what we would call a slower moving market. That's why when we started it, we started out our number one indicator, we wanted to use RMO. Um, you've probably heard of RMO if you're using Metastock. Um, big favorite of Metastock, big favorite with us. Um, it was developed in 2005. We think, you know, compared to all the other indicators out there, that's really fairly recent. We call it a modern market indicator and, in our opinion, one of the best. Um, the thing with RMO, though, is that uh, you look at some of these buying signals, this is kind of a typical RMO chart, um, it's very accurate, but a lot of times it takes a month or two for the, for the signal to actually prove out. And we wanted to figure out a way to tighten up your basic RMO buying signals so that we get trades that, you know, we can get in and out of in a couple days, you know, one to five days. And RMO, just as it exists out of the box, is really, in our opinion, kind of a longer term deal requires long holes. So how do we tighten it up? We use the second indicator. We start with RMO. The second indicator, we use some of Wilder's directional indices, the PDI, the MDI, the ADX3, because those are really set, you know, basically to the last couple of weeks, basically 14 days or so and, and tighter. And we get trades that look like this. Most signal, but after the six, second filter of the um, Wilder's equations, we get a signal, we get an entry, we get a short little trend up. This is a, this is a, these are some examples from just a couple days ago. We had a nice little five day trade, five percent trade in two days here, and these these trends, the signals and the trends that that come with them, they don't last long. You're in, you're out. You're out on the second day, third day. You're making four or five percent. Here's another one from the day before, uh, September six. It's kind of the same thing. Get a signal. We get an entry the next day. One, two, three days, you're around 4%. So even, even if you enter this exit on the second or fourth day, you're still going to get about 4 or 3 and 4%. 4%. So these trends, the important thing is that the trend actually pops right with the signal. You make your move, you see your move, you get your move, you make your, you make your small gain, you're in, you're out. The final triangulation we use, we got RMO, we have the Wilders short-term trending. We use order book buying pressure or the on balance indicator, the OBV as it's called in Metastock. The order book really shows what's going on today. It shows if the money's going in, going out. You can overlay it on top of the chart with the buying signals that you get from the, from the first couple of explorations. And you can see did the money go in or out today. So what we do is we look, we get our RMO buying signal that's already been vetted 
with the secondary scan of the Wilder's equations, and then we see, well, was the buying pressure up that day? And then that's a third corroborating indi indicator. And basically, the OBV will mirror the trend, but it's really important to look at it on the day of the signal to make sure that, that what's happening today, was the money flowing in or out, is the trend still happening today? Because again, RMO looks back you know, a month or so, the wildest stuff looks back, you know, maybe over two weeks. The OBV, it's right there. It's today. It's what's happened today and yesterday. It brings you into the current moment. Uh, here's another example. Uh, this was a really great trade we had at the end of August, 12% uh, in three days. But again, the OBV, you can see the, the, when the OBV is green and the money's flowing in, it corroborates the trade. So it's, it's pretty simple, really. We use those three indicators. Um, we call it the green light uh, system. And here, here's another important point that each of these indicators does different things. We have the RMO for medium. It's a medium term indicator in our opinion. Gives you kind of a yes or no. And it's a very complex formula for you. If you ever look it up online, you'll see <laughs> lots of numbers, nothing I want to deal with. I just want to press the button in Metastock and get it to show. Um, the wilder stuff, again, is fairly complex. It's a shorter term indicator. It gives you some indication, though, in terms of strength and life cycle, and it's a simpler formula than the RMO. Finally, your order book pressure, it's very immediate. It rates the strength and direction, and as opposed to being a complex formula, it's really a direct measurement. Um, this is an important point here, and that is that each indicator is different. They're different timelines. The first one is a, you know, really a few weeks, several weeks, more like a month or so down to today with the OBV. They use different types of measurements from you know, yes, no, to things like direction and strength. And they use different processes. The complex calculation, some of them, you know, the first one, the ORMO, very complex to a simple observation, which is the order book. You know, what was the order book really flowing into the stock on, on a given day? Um, so that's really it in a nutshell. Um, I, I hope this was, uh, was enlightening. It, 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 you know, the, the big point here is that Using multiple indicators is not just a question of throwing a bunch of indicators in a bag and hoping you get a good signal. Um, we put this together, again, using the best of decision theory, um, making sure that each indicator has its own job to do in the process to end up with a really tight signal. Um, if you want to learn more about this methodology, um, make it really easy just to go to Steady Trader. Uh, you can request actual signals and trade list. Uh, you can take a trial and watch the videos. Um, you can also go to my site, Steady Trader, to get a free copy of our book, Read This First Before You Buy Stock. Um, that'll talk about the research that led us to uh, develop the system the way we did. Um, it's, kind of, it's 80 pages, really goes in depth as to why we, why we came to the points of view we did. Um, but again, you can uh, see the system in action with the trial at Steady Trader, um, watch some videos of us running the scans, and, and actually get signals and trade lists. Um, all you have to do is uh, send us an email, give us a call, or go to steadytrader.com, however you want to do it, to investigate it further. And um, that's really about all I have to say on this system. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll watch the chat board for a little minute here and see if we got any questions. Uh, and I uh, thank you for your time. Somebody wanted my T-shirt. Stuart I see that. Stuart wants a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> These are very limited edition. I think they... Anyway, uh, thanks for coming, Roy. Sure thanks thing. Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, and we'll see you at the next one. Appreciate yeah, I'm not it. seeing any questions, so quiet group today, I guess. All right. All right, cool. Well, thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, hopefully it was interesting for you, and uh, we'll see you at the next webinar.